This is truly an incredible, juicy story you are witnessing with a front seat, Hollywood history. Oh my God, this video is gonna be incredible. I can't wait to share all this with you. And the Disney Fox deal, it seems was only the beginning. There are a lot more deals I think coming our way. Oh my God, but you know what? Don't worry, I think everything's gonna not only just be okay, but I think actually turn out pretty darn fantastic. It's gonna take some time now, maybe a couple of years, but oh, things are happening, things are happening. Let's discuss. So Hollywood clearly feels that the writing is in the subscription numbers. We've been going over them. They're not moving in some cases. We know it's, we, we can all see this. That's how obvious this is. Uh, and I think that's what's pushed these companies to finally act. But studios feel that the only way that they can compete with Disney, Netflix, and tech companies like Amazon and Apple, Apple has so much money that I'm sure when they make more of an effort, they'll dominate. I mean, the content they have on their service is so great. We were just talking about this yesterday on Movie Math, and Amazon, they're suddenly on fire with, with video content. Their latest meeting, uh, you know, Bezos was like, wow, the video, video division's really popping. It's really coming alive. And I think they're, they're only going to get bolder. So, and, you know, Amazon and Apple and Disney and Netflix, they make so much money. They make so much money. So the other studios are like, the only way that we can compete is to combine, like mecha anime style, which is hilarious. Because we're not just talking about needing resources in terms of content, but that those financial resources as well. It ain't cheap to launch and sustain a successful streaming service. Think about it. Each marquee Disney Plus show costs around $100 million. And Netflix is spending $17 billion, billion with a B, on content for 2021 alone. In a single year. In a single year. And speaking of money, I tell you, it's always about the money. If you want to know what's motivating people in business, follow the money. Because it's debt that has created this deal as well. AT&T is still about $150 billion, another billion with a B, in debt. Thanks largely to John Stanky's predecessor acquiring Time Warner in the first place, which they rebranded as Warner Media. And to make matters worse... This acquisition really hasn't worked out for AT&T. The whole reason that they bought Warner Media was for HBO Max to create that streaming service because they have phones and they are te they're a telecommunications company and they wanted to offer an amazing streaming service through their distribution platforms. But an amazing streaming service did not emerge. Because, uh, you know, it's very expensive to create one, and again, AT&T can't afford it. And where they do have money, they want to. They have an obligation to put it towards their primary business goal, and that's to build out 5G, which is very expensive, and to, again, be that telecommunications company. So they don't have the money, and now no longer the interest, to run Warner Media. And then there's also Jason Keelar. What does he have to do with this? Well, it turns out he ruffled a lot of feathers. So CNN's Jeff Zucker clashed with Keelar to such a degree, he said he was leaving at the end of this year, which John Stanky wasn't too happy about. Hold on, we're getting somewhere. And then Toby Emmerich, as we all know, we just discussed this, tried to make a break for Netflix when it looked like Keelar and Sarnoff wouldn't, wouldn't be renewing his contract next year. Remember, Keelar and Sar Sarnoff are digital people. They come from the digital area, which is, and they were brought in because of that expertise. But on the opposite side of these discussions, we have a lot of old school Hollywood people. And we're gonna have David Zaslav enter in just a moment, and he's old school Hollywood too. So Toby Emmerich didn't get that Netflix deal. So Zucker and Emmerich aren't gonna give up these sweet, cushy, powerful jobs without a fight, right? And it looks like they might have just won that fight. <laughs> and it gets even more juicy because in March it was revealed that Jason Keelar took in more than double what his boss, John Stanky, did. When you make more than twice, more than double what your boss does, your boss probably isn't going to be too happy about that. I mean, I think if I were Jason Keelar, I would have been very nervous at that moment. I would have been like, uh oh. And then Stanky Zucker and Discovery's, Discovery's David Zaslav. We're gonna be talking about David Zaslav so much, not just in this video, but going forward. So they're all golfing buddies. And it was revealed today that all of, all of this came out of 
golf, the golfing connection. Uh, Stanky and Zaslav admitted that they were talking about golf and then they, their conversation turned to combining their businesses. And the Hollywood reporters pointed out that Zucker and uh, Zaslav are also frequent golfing buddies. Uh, and they probably had a lot of discussions about this. Zucker was like, it looks like I'm gonna have to leave CNN. And then Zaslav's probably like, I bet I could do something about that for you. And he's like, I bet you could. So this is incredible. Side note, I hope that all of you are seeing that if you wanna be a successful executive, you really need to learn to play golf, right? So that is, I think, the most important takeaway for every all of you. If you're not immediately involved in this deal, golf is the biggest takeaway. That's still the executive game. Now, anyway, it looks, so it looks like all these people got together, maybe on the golf course, or at least talking about golf. It was a golf-themed takeover party behind Jason Kilar's back and are likely going to push him out. Now, it's not a fi- official that Kilar is leaving, but Zaslav will run this new company with no mention of what Jason Kilar is going to do going forward. And Stanky said that while Kilar remains CEO of Warner Media, he did say, Stanky did say that Zaslav has a lot of decisions to make on personnel. Ooh, also soon, because of this deal, Warner Media won't exist or David Zaslav will be running it because David Zaslav is the captain now. So what's Jason Kilar gonna do? I don't think there's room for both of them. So who is David Zaslav? So he's a boss, that's who he is. He worked at NBC Universal for about 20 years. Now stick a pin in that, we're gonna circle back to it in a minute. Oh, this is so great. Beca- uh, he became president of cable and domestic TV and new media distribution over there. So he wasn't at- involved in NBC Universal's movie business, but he was really a key player in their television business. And then because of that, he jumped over to Discovery in 2007 to run their television business. And he has successfully grown the company, which, tra- which translation means the shareholders are very happy with him. But Zaslav clearly wants to be not just back in the entertainment business, but in the movie business. In 2015, Discovery took on 3.4% of Lionsgate and Zaslav joined their board. And now he's just backdoored himself into running Warner Media or whatever they decide to call it. They already dropped the brothers. Is the Warner next? That would be insane to me. I would think, I hope it's just called Warner something. I hope, I would like them to go back to, I don't know, maybe it'll be Discovery Warner. I don't know, we'll see. I'm sure they'll name it pretty soon. So what exactly is the deal? Oh, it gets even better. AT&T is spinning off Warner Media into a new company that they own 71% of, and then Discovery gets 29% for a cool 43 billion. Again, billion with a B. Now, hmm, AT&T owns the majority of this company, but it's Discovery's guy who runs it? That says to me that this is only stage one of AT&T's plan to completely bail on Warner Media. How so? Oh, it's beautiful. Because even with the 43 billion that they just got from Discovery or are getting from Discovery, AT&T is still about 100 billion in debt. So what do they do? Ah, beautiful. I'm sure you can see it, some of you. They sell the 71% to somebody else. Oh, it's gorgeous. Now, who would they sell it to? Now remember, Zaslav used to work at NBC Universal. So word is that before this discovery deal happened, AT&T was flirting with doing this with Comcast, which is what Wall Street has been telling them to do for about a year now. Combine Warner Media and NBC Universal because Wall Street thinks that distribution businesses and Comcast of course is primarily a cable company, so telecommunications, cable, they shouldn't be distributing content. Wall Street feels you guys should just be distributors, focus on your prime directive. So Comcast now, it seems, wants to do the same thing. They want to spin off NBC Universal. Now, the deal didn't come through fast enough to, to do that first, to, to combine Warner Media and NBC Universal out of the gate. And the Hollywood Reporter speculated last night that maybe Comcast would now run over and get CBS Viacom. Insanity. And maybe they will. But Comcast could easily buy the 71% of this new company and own Warner Media and Discovery, which is a much better fit with their few franchises and of course their theme parks uh, where they already have Harry Potter. Also, if Comcast were to roll in CBS, Viacom and NBC Universal into one, I think they would have a problem with the government of combining CBS and NBC. But Warner Media Discovery doesn't have a major network in its portfolio. So that would not be a conflict of interest. (laughs) It's beautiful. What also would help with this antitrust situation to get by is for these companies to argue to the government that if they don't 
if they aren't allowed to merge, they'll have to go out of business. Because again, they can't compete with Disney, Netflix, Amazon, and Apple. They can be like, you approved the Disney Fox merger, so this is on you, man. I just got to do what I got to do to stay competitive. That Warner Media Discovery NBC Universal combination is sweet, sweet, sweet. Ah, love it. Uh, somebody will buy that 71%. Someone's going to buy it. So finally, what, and there are a lot of people who could afford it. So we'll see what happens. Now, finally, what exactly is happening structure-wise right now, right? And keep in mind that this is all set to go into effect in mid-2022, and it has to be approved by the government, but I think it will be. Which now, I mean, how could, how could, it would be totally unfair. You'd have to break up Disney Fox otherwise. Which now puts all of Warner Media in a holding pattern for about a year. Not great. It's going to be hard for executives to make decisions because they got to see what's going to happen. But I think, or, or they'll go out in a fear flurry of deals. Uh, but I think we all agree that this is necessary to fix what's become a bit of a mess. I mean, look, AT&T wouldn't be doing this if it was working out. If, 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 if Warner Media was a huge success, AT&T wouldn't want to get rid of it. But I think they're like, it's not doing great and we need the money. So that's what's happening. So AT&T, therefore, is no longer the parent company of Warner Media. Warner Media and Discovery have combined into a new company, which again, AT&T owns 71% of and has the right to sell that 71% off of. David Zaslov runs this new company and he will decide who, keep, who he keeps and who he replaces across the board in every single division of Warner Media. And that's why it's too early to tell what exactly will, ha will happen to your favorite brands. Will the Snyderverse come back? Way too early to tell. You need to see who will be running things under Zaslov. But clearly, again, things aren't great at Warner Media, which is why this is happening. And so Zaslov, I'm sure, sees that he needs to make some big changes. So changes will happen. The question is, what will those changes be? And who will be the new people if there are new people? Uh, it does look like Toby Emmerich, though, might be staying based on the way this went together. We'll see. Um, I, I, I think the way the art, way the, it's been phrased in the coverage, I don't think that, I actually don't think that Zaslov and Emmerich are friends, but I think that, I think Emmerich can point, Emmerich's, Emmerich's been at Warner Brothers for so long and he very successfully ran New Line. So I think there's an argument he could make for sticking around, but let's see what Zaslov decides. I don't know if Zaslov wants to rock the boat to that degree. Um, how, how does he want to go back to when I mean Warner Brothers was working, or does he want to just completely? I mean, they tried to take Warner Brothers in a new direction; it didn't work. So it'll be interesting to see what Zaslav decides. Zaslav is very much old school Hollywood. That's why they're bringing him in because the new school of Jason Keeler and Ann Sarnoff has not been particularly well received. Not only externally, but internally within the industry. So HBO Max and Discovery Plus will likely merge into one super streaming service. Maybe they'll add Peacock to that, hmm, right? And Zaslav will also have to go about finding a large line of credit to jumpstart the entire company with. Again, if you want to be competitive today, you need a bottomless pit of money. Uh, one really great development, though, is that this new company will be independent and solely focused on its own success rather than lost in the shuffle over at AT&T. And I think that's really a fantastic, again, a fantastic development. Warner Brothers, this new company can just get into the business of succeeding. So I think that's great. Really, really, really excellent. We'll go back to investor days for Warner that involve Warner Brothers, where they're the focus instead of just like a little afterthought or a small portion of AT&T's overall presentation. Uh, also, David Zaslov has been waiting for this opportunity clearly his whole career, and he has a very good track record. He'll likely make the most of this. And furthermore, as you can see, he has deep connections in Hollywood, understands the politics of the biz, and is good at it because he's well-liked. He's popular. He's good on the golf course. Hopefully, he can get rid of all the drama at Warner Brothers because I think that's their biggest problem, at Warner Brothers specifically. So again, this also makes it clear that Disney, the Disney Fox deal was only the beginning and we'll likely to see more deals like this over the next uh, couple of years as companies in Hollywood combine into behemoths and then they, they, they change their houses up. You know, you're going to see a lot of exec executive deals as well. Changes, new people coming in. It's really, really fascinating. Uh, the question that remains, though, is what will these new combinations be? Warner Media plus Discovery plus, because I think AT&T is going to subtract themselves from this equation pretty quickly. Who knew the 
the plus in all these uh, streaming services names would become so literal, right? That's hilarious. And I think at and gonna get out of Hollywood altogether. I think they're gonna, I think they're probably sorry they ever came into the business. They're gonna go back to just being a telecommunications giant based out of Dallas. So who do you want at and to sell their 71% to? And what do you think of this whole situation? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.